Good morning. I love stocks. Today's date, 12-3-2020. And we're going to go over my EV car watch list and the pot stock watch list again today and see what we got going on. So, welcome everybody to the new year coming up. It's going to be a lot of fun. I've started me another uh, options challenge. Started at 1,000. I'm up to about 1,300 right now this week, so... We'll just keep building her up. Let's go ahead and get to the charts and the stocks here. I'm going to move this over to the side. I can get a good look at them. Pull up a chart. i got a couple I want to look at. This is the one I use when I'm day trading. This is called the EMA chart. I have my 200, my uh, 100, the 34, and the 9 EMA. And I use them as reference tools for supports and resistance areas. So let's go ahead and get right straight to the first stock and let's get started on the EV car watch list. Nile, number one. Called a beautiful bottom play on this. If you'd watched the previous video I did, the previous two in a way, it tells you about where I thought it would pull back and it pulled back right to 38.64. And then we had a nice little run. We had a breakout after hours to 48.97, a little fat finger. And I think she's going to kind of level out. Now I'm going to keep this... This number right here is my pivot point, is my support level. Anything below that is going to be a strong buy. They're right at 43.67. I think it can pull back there. If not, we might find us another little spot. Let's look at the five minute real fast here. One day, five minute. I want to kind of see if I can get in here. This. No, I can't do that. Let's do something different. There's another chart time limit that I had. Let me try this uh, 20 day. Yeah, there it is, right there. 4085. That's going to be the new support. This is on a 20 day, one hour time limit. And I'm using the body of this base of this candle right here to find a support, a strong buy at 4080. So if it dips down today and it goes at 4080, you might have a double bottom. It's pretty strong support. I can see it touch down here a couple of times. We did break below that into this lower channel that I did call. So you have like three different entry levels right there. But this is going to be your 4085. I think she'll stop there and start to repeat back up. This is Nile. And then you're going to have to break this resistance at 4829 to try to get it back up here. I'm semi-bullish on Nile, but more bullish on Tesla. Let's take a look at Tesla today and see what she's looking at here. I don't see much volume on it so far, so we'll type it in and see what we got. Well, she did break up after hours. That's pretty nice. Let's go ahead and pull down this daily one minute. Nice little breakout. Look at that. Finding support here at the 200 on the daily one minute. I think we can pull this back to this lower channel. Strong buy right down here at... 569 and we're going to put these three as a strong buy re, re, uh, support levels and i'm going to go ahead and make this a fat one because that'll be the that'll be the main factor right there if it does pull back to this top area that's going to be a strong buy at 569.80 now you got three other different support levels here you have this one right here at 572.37 576.07 with a resistance to break of his 590.51, I have 589.75 is the one I want to break. I'll use this 200 in case it knifes, and then I'll use that 200 as a resistance when I jump in the trade. If it pulls back to this 570, I'll scalp it up to this 200, or if the momentum and the volume's there, I'll keep riding it up to 590. Tesla's my number one trade in the EV market. Let's go ahead and look at another one here. IDEX. Let's look at the 20 day. We did hit my little resistance line up here. Oh gosh, getting pretty clustered up. I'm going to clear this out. Start fresh. You get a better picture of it. See right down here? That's going to be your support level. Then you got another strong buy right down here at 167. You got a gap up here to break. And that's going to be right there at 244 and we'll pull back to these other support levels right in here there's your hammer right there it worked pretty well it's just hammer right in here 
I like to talk about these when I'm trading them. I'm going to go ahead and put this support here and I'll show you this hammer. That gum it. Now I can magnify it. We had a little spinning top right here, and then we had this hammer. And when that hammer came in, bam, she broke out the next day. So always remember you had this big engulfing bullish candle, spinning top, then a hammer, and then bam. And the same thing here, you had the spinning top in between the body of this candle wasn't ready to break out yet held support here then bam dipped on down so those are the things you got to kind of look at here the spinning top was above the body of the candle which made it stronger so it's IDEX just a little lesson to keep up with there so let's go back to the 20 day and see if we can find anything on here strong supports can be right down in here Actually, yeah, right down in here, I'm going to put 185 as a strong buy if it dips down to 185. This is IDEX. I'm going to put that red line in there for a strong buy. You have three different supports. You have this 226, 201, and 184. And then we'll run it up. Resistance to break is going to be right around this 244 area. And it's IDEX. Nicola. Nicola had a real tough day yesterday. We got a nice little pop and then bam, man, just went down. Some bad news going on with Nicola right now with General with General Motors. So we could probably get a little retracement bounce back up, but I don't think we're going to see these highs for right yet. We might get back up to this level. We got to break a resistance right here at 1961. And then maybe have an exit plan up here at 2076. To maybe right around in here. I'm looking over here in this channel, see. Maybe right around that 2157. I have a low support, strong buy at 1462. And we can retrace it and count it back up on, on the way up. If she decides to knife, that 1462 is going to be your strong buy on NKLA. And then you'll run it up to resistance at 1757 if that breaks, or even run it up to this lower part down here right in this area right around seventeen dollars so that's a nice little bounce if it reaches down here and holds you know it's a two dollar and thirty cent bounce nice little scalp right there and that's all i'm duping, doing until the end of the year is scalping stocks i'm gonna, still in a contested election and i'm not just taking too much risk so let's look at another one. We've got Workhorse. Another bad news on Workhorse. It did sell off pretty hard and rebound. I think it'll stay in this channel right in here. If it breaks out, that'll be pretty nice, but I'd be taking profit. We're going to have another resistance right here as you see the top of this channel. So let's keep it in here between 1860 and 2147. That's Workhorse. Candy had a nice little pullback. Start to recover after the good sell off right there so we're down here at support level there is a strong buy if it does get down to 611 you know i'd be in that trade but we can find a double bottom right here at 752 and maybe run it back up to this 34 on the 20 day or try to break this 839 re resistance and that's candy let's see if we got anything else blink <clears throat> had a pretty good five day sell off then she recovered a little bit. I still think we can go down a little more on it. We got to break a resistance right here at 25. What is this here? We got to break this resistance right around 24. Right up in here. If we can break that resistance, we'll go higher. If not, it'll pull back to a double bottom. And that's going to be right here at 20, 27 for a retracement back up. That's got a hold. If not, we can fall deeper in debt here and hit this sending triangle down here at 1531. So I'm being very cautious with Blink right now, but I think it's just had a little hard sell off and this is something we want to hold on to a long time and we're getting ready to start scalping. It did bounce off this 200 right here, EMA, Blink. And then I want to look at Plug. They're trying to pump Solo, so keep an eye on it. Where's plug at? 
looking at my watches. I'll just type it in here. Kramer opened his mouth on plug and it dipped. Same as, uh, oops, that ain't it. Plug also had a good five days sell off and started to recover. Bounce back to my resistance line right here that I had. I don't know if I want to call that a pivot point in the channel. I think I'd rather call it down here, somewhere in this here area. So I'm going to make that 2179, what is it, 2182, my pivot point area on the 20 day chart. Now I use a pivot point because it's determination if it's going to go up or if it's going to pull back and start falling back into lower support areas. So this is the pivot point. I call it a pivot point because we had highs here and then we touched down right here on the 20 day. That's a piece of the pie right in the middle of the slice. So we've got three different supports right down here and I'm going to adjust and find a little area right in here. Bam. These three right here are going to be your support levels. Resistance to break is going to be this 2464 and if we can do that we'll get higher and break this solid resistance at 2539 or she'll pull back to this 2182 um, area with a strong buy down here at under 20 bucks right at right at 20 and that's going to be plug so that's it for the evs let's look at a few pot stocks that are running today we've got sndl she's had a double top breakout we kind of pulled back in here this morning we're going to keep a good eye on it i think strong buy right here at 64.25 with a resistance to break right at 82.50 that's how I'll scalp it. If it pulls back to 64.25, I might jump in the trade small, see how it reacts. If I start to see a confirmation of moving up, I'll add up. This is going to be 82.79 for a resistance to break SNDL. We're looking at the pot stocks. I got in Hexel yesterday. It had a little pullback pre-market. I scalped it. Scalped it to about 117, I think. And then she went ahead and pulled on back pre-market. And then I went ahead and bought more of it. So now we're down here at 109. I'm down about six cents a share, seven cents a share right now. I might add on to it. Let's look at the one day, one minute. I'm still strong on it. I wish I could went ahead and bought in down here. Could have bought in down here at 104. I'd add it on. No problem. At 102, and I got 99. I think I have 92 for low support. Today's resistance to break is going to be right up in here at 116. If we can break that 116 area, we'll go higher. I might get out of the trade even today or buy more if it dips a little stronger. But that's going to be a hard resistance to break and then run it up to 121 and then 123. Hexo, ACB. Vegas called bullish yesterday. It ran up. Had a lot high of 11.39, pulled back to our support area again right around 10.50 twice. Did it pre-market today, so I'm going to be watching ACB today for resistance to break. I'm going to call it right around, let's do it right in here, right around 11.03. If we can bust past that and climb above the 11.17, we might get a double top break at 11.38. Uh, let's, let's adjust it right here to 11.35. And then that double bottom right here, 10.50. If that holds, that'll be your buy entry. If not, you have your other two support areas, 10 bucks and 10.26. And it can be a little choppy right in here too at 10.40. That could be a pretty good little spot to get in it. Reason why, because we had these two tops right here. So I'm always looking at tops for resistance levels. And I'm looking at pullbacks for supports, like I did right in here. See, we've almost topped it up right there. But I'm using the body of that candle. I can't pull it up right there, but I'll put this little line right here. But I'm, so I'm using the bodies of these candles for supports. Found equilibrium in between these two. Nice little bounce up off that. So that's ACB. Keep a good eye on it. Let's look at the 20 day again. Yeah, no lower than 990. I mean, it can hit down to 971. 
but that $10 area is pretty solid. We are showing a little weakness with this lower high right here. So it could bounce back down to here and then maybe retrace back up to around the $10, $11 area. Keep a good eye on it, ACB. Vegas is bullish on it. I'm semi-bullish on it for right now, but I'll scalp it. And let's see what else we got on here. I think I talked about Hexel already. Or did I? No. Yeah, I did. Tilray. Tilray, same thing. Lower high. We did hit a support level here at 825. It could pull back to that or hit this 200 on the 20-day. That's the EMA. I got a strong buy right down at 692. So these are your support areas. 1830. And you got this area right in here at 780. 737 with a strong buy at 692. Resistance to break is going to be 924. Tilray. APHA. We're, we really like this stock. Any sell-off is a good buy. As you can see, we had a pretty good sell-off on this one right here, and she bounced back up. Trying to create a channel. We do have the lower high, so maybe this can pull back to the 776 area and bounce on back up and find resistance at 868. That needs to hold. If not, you can pull back to this ascending triangle down here, right where the 200 is at 7 bucks, for a very strong buy. We see how we peaked out up here. Yeah, 690 to 7 bucks. That would be a real strong buy as it matches up with that 200. IGC, I'm watching it. It had a real hard sell off, then bounced back good. I really liked that, how that reacted. It did pull back to a double to a triple top breakout down here and found support. I'm always looking for chart patterns to find supports at for the pullbacks. Chart patterns are the key to when you want to catch knives. Now, if you want to learn how to catch a knife, you'll sign up to this YouTube channel and watch a few of these videos, and you'll understand. Watch a few of them and say, wow, how do you do that? How do you catch that knife? And I'm calling these knives before they even happen. So I think we could have a double bottom right here at 181, and then retrace back up to find resistance at 223, IGC. But I've been catching knives for over 16 years, and I'm pretty much look for chart patterns and uh, places of consolidation. And I don't jump right in on the first knife. I give it patience to hit my confirmation right here. And I called that on uh, uh, Nile the other day. Did a special video on Nile. It, perfect, right to the penny. People were bullish on it. And I said, nah, this ain't going to knife back. It's going to hit this number. And bam. And, and I want to show it again because, oh, you know. And I like showing these because people sometimes say, you know, how can a person be, you know, the, the rumor is don't try to catch a knife. Well, I'm good at catching them. And if I catch it at the wrong spot, I'm still bullish on the trade or I wouldn't be taking the trade at all. So I'll buy it at a second liver cost average down. And I did that with Tesla yesterday and made a killing on it. I jumped in it, thought I had support. It dropped another buck. I jumped in it again, added on, and it ran five or six it ran oh, I mean the option ran up five or six hundred after that so it's always good to watch look for them knives when they find places of consolidation and support and that knife on Nile was a perfect call let's see what else we got on the pot stock watch list Cron as I look at this chart I see a little pivot point in this channel right here. <clears throat> Excuse me, on Cron. That's 791. I also see that 200 at 784. And I kind of like that. I really like that. So let's see. This 763, that could be your first support level. The pivot point right here around 791. And that first support right here at 818. With a resistance to break, it's going to be right here on the double top, right at right around 909. This is Cron. We called this down at five bucks, and it's had a pretty nice run. We're up here. 
I think this was one of my favorite stocks, my first good call that I did back when they legalized marijuana in Canada. So yeah, we can pull back to this 200 or we can hit any of these three supports. We can stop these videos at any time and write these numbers down. That's Cron. Let's see if we got anything else. CGC had a pretty hard pullback too in the sell-off. I think we're finding places of consolidation. You got your first support right here at 27.76. Your next one right down here. Yeah, I'm going to call it right there. Right there at 27.01. With a strong buy right down here at the 200 at 26.19. I'm using that 200 as a gauge on the 20 day because we're a little choppy right now. And the sell-offs can come in pretty strong. You had three black crows right here. I pay attention to these three black crows when I'm talking, and I talk about chart patterns. I talk about patterns. Now, this is a candlestick pattern. When you see patterns like this, these are reversal plays. And what you had right here is a hanging man, almost a hanging man thing where it's well, going to go ahead and dip on down. And you had the three candles. You had the three black crows. Then she consolidated into the next day. I would have personally probably bought it, maybe, right in here. Just knowing that I'm bullish on CGC and I've seen them three black crows and then run it on up to right around the 28. But chart patterns, I'm telling you, is the key to catching knives. If you learn how to study chart patterns, this is not a healthy healthy one right here at all because the bodies were still weak the still weak still weak you know everybody is below that's still showing signs of weakness now right in here you're showing the sign of of consolidation with these two candles and it did bounce up a little bit you're showing you're showing a little bit of strength you're showing the buyers coming into the trade so if i was going to catch this knife on the three black crows bam i'd be in that trade and I'd run it up and got out of it with a buck worth profit the next morning. Easily. CGC. So chart patterns are the key to catching knives. Now I'm going to go ahead and shut the, cut this thing off because i got to get get to work. And let me see. I don't know. Let's see if we can find one more in here. Uh, this, this is one of our favorites. Now let's use this one here. GRWG. We really like this trade. We called it down here at 20 bucks. It ran all the way to 37.31. We're same position, higher, lower highs. We're looking for a channel. We'll start playing in that channel. I'm going to think at lower support, if I was to call this, it would be right down 31.28. We're right down here on this. Uh, and here we go again with another chart pattern. 30.27. We have an ascending triangle right here. I don't see any patterns at all in here. The only thing I'd see is a 3 Three day sell off but this here is a strong support level so if this sucker pulls back to right around the $30 area 30.24 I guarantee and I'll stop trading no I, I can't say that because the pot sector but I guarantee it should bounce off this 30 31 pretty strong I might take my initial entry right here at 30 30 31 21 and then that first support level is going to be right down here. And I want to adjust that to 32.49. So if that, that's your three supports with a strong buy right down here off in this channel of the 200 off this ascending triangle. Chart patterns are the key to catching knives. If you identify a chart pattern, there's no other chart pattern on here except this right here. For example, ascending triangle. Talk about them all the time. You want to become a better trader? Learn how to identify chart patterns. Bam. Ascending triangle. Pretty strong one. Held pretty good for three days. I'd have stayed in this trade. If I'd got in here, down here, and it held these support levels, I'd have stayed in the trade. But you never know. Come in the next day, and the sucker could have dropped five or six bucks. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm just not a... At these levels, I'm not a real strong holder of these pot stocks. I'm a scalper, and that's just the way it is. Maybe back, maybe back 20 days ago. Let's do this here. Maybe back 20 days ago, 
I would have I would have swung it. But when we're up here and we're in a four minute channel with the higher lows, I'm scalping until we get down to a support level, and that real strong's right down here at thirty dollars. And then I'd probably swing it for two or three days and run it back up to resistance level of that thirty two forty nine to break. And if it run, broke that, we can get we can go higher with it. You know, if it knives, it's got a knife. And I'm watching these. I'm looking for these stocks. These are my momentum plays. And when they sell off, they they people get back in the trade. I mean, sell off, sell off, back in, 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 sell off, back in. So they're bullish. And slow support, 30, 27. And that's going to be it for the pot stocks. Let's go ahead and pull up. I want, I want to make sure that everybody, if, if you like it, hit the like button. If you don't, please hit that negative button. I got one person that just loves hitting that. I'm probably someone that I kicked out of the room or, you know, we don't allow pumpers in the room. You got to have a reason why you're in a trade and why you're getting out of a trade. You need to have an entry level and an exit before you, and please don't go into a trade blindly. Have some kind of plan some kind of strategy, build a strategy. I have a bunch of strategies. I can trade the market any day, and I do my best when the market is red. I am 95% green. And then when the market's green, I'm about 65 to 85% green. Because I just, I'm not as good of a trader as Vegas is when it's coming out of these 52 week highs. I'd rather try to buy the dip because I know they'll pull back and I'll jump in on, but I know what a momentum trade is and I know the tape and I know that we follow the money and the money flows a big deal. So please subscribe, ring that bell, subscribe to that channel and get our future updates on our videos. If you're not in the room, at least you can get some benefit learning how to chart these charts up. I love stocks.